Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can save your player position in the multiplayer game that we were working on. So as always I've got my server on the left and my client on the right. To start things off let's go into the client. Let's head into our local player and take a look at this press escape. So whenever we leave the game we want to tell the server that this was our last known position so he needs to save that in our data structure that's stored on the server. So in our case that's the any files with our credentials. So let's add two to the buffer over here. Both going to be U32s. Let's make one our X coordinate and the second our Y coordinate. And then also before we go to the main room, let's say global.playerX equals X and global.playerY equals Y. And we can use these global player X and player Y variables to then spawn our player next time. So if he's just leaving to the main menu, the server will still know that that was his last known position. But when he joins the game next, we can use that easily. Okay, so let's grab all of this. Let's go to the room. Let's go to our creation code. So before we were just randomly creating ourselves in the room. Let's rather put ourselves at global player X and global player Y. And then let's once again tell everyone else that we're joining the game with also those two extra coordinates. We're going to put those before the zero, which was the room. And that's going to be global player X and global player Y. Very good stuff. So let's hop over to the server. We need to change the K6 because now it has two extra variables that we're passing through there in that buffer. And let's do things with them. Okay, so remember that 6 after the type of the X, the Y, and then the room as before. Okay, so server, we're going to go to scripts, handling coming packets. Let's expand this. Looking for six. There it is. There's a six. ID, type, room ID, player name. So in between type and room ID, we have to say var px equals, it's actually a buffer read 32, so we can actually copy this bit. Oops. And we can say var py and the same, just like that. Then over here with object player name, here we're going to say player x equals px. And player y equals py. Keep going down. Tell other players about this change. Now we're sending a six response back to everyone else. Let's also put this in here. Let's put it after the name. Two u32s. We're going to have player dot player x and player dot player y. Actually, that's supposed to go down here. And this one is supposed to just say PX and PY. All right, let's keep going down. Tell the players about this player. Oh, tell uh, tell this player about other players. That's all fine. Tell this player about active NPCs. That's great. So let's see here. If the player is going to a game room. Okay. So if he's not going to a game room, let's put an else. And here we're going to save their last known position. So I'm going to put a to do here. Because right now we haven't really decided what our new any file data structure is going to look like. So let's have a think about that. If we scroll up to case two, that's a registration request. Here we're checking if the player exists. We've got to use this any that has all their information in there. I think now we've got to have one any file per player and that any file can have their username, their passwords for now. It can have their X and Y coordinates, which room they're in and such like that. So let's change things here a bit. So to check if the player exists, well, if there's a file with his name on it, then he does exist. So we're going to say 
if not file exists the file name is going to be player username that's coming through plus then let's append to that dot ini then we're going to register a new player if it doesn't exist here we're going to say any open let's move that and it's going to be this bit also and for now we're going to write strings this one and that one is going to have the player username let's say let's call this credentials because we're going to start with that username password player username player password password hash in this case we're also going to write any write real let's call this section position let's call this room and here we're going to write a zero so when the person is registering for the first time his room is going to be zero then let's write two more reals one's going to be an x and the other one's going to be the y x y let's start everyone off at 224 160 okay so they go into the very first room maybe this is the little village where they choose their character they get some quests they meet some people um, all the level zero guys start off here so they can start off at 224 160 at a later stage you can assign different spawn points for your first map so everyone spawns in a different spot that's up to you cool then any close and our response equals one and we can actually just keep this script registration and get rid of that so now we're going to send the response to the client let's see zero to response now we need to actually tell this client now that he's registered where he can spawn when he chooses to actually go into the game world so after our response let's um, send some things firstly we need to send the x and y coordinates and lastly the room so x y room these are going to be u32s 224 160 and zero okay so that's going to a two while we're here let's do the same for the login request so before we were getting the player ID, the username, the password hash, and we're initializing response. Well, we need to now initialize the position X and the position Y. And also current room. Again, let's check if the player exists. If so, let's open up his stuff. We're going to save our place to password. We can get that again. It's now called credentials. Password. And we can have a blank string. Let's say position X equals... Any read real position x default to zero. Let's do the same for the y and the room. Y current room. Y room all defaulting to zero and then let's do any close over there get everything we need then we have our test over here if the password hash equals the player stored password our response is one with object player checking the IDs setting up usernames and we can delete all this sending our response to three which is going to have the position X the position Y and the current room, all U32, so we can grab these. 
left response, we can say position x, position y. Remember, this is login, so we don't know what the values are. Current room, just like that, and that's ready to go. Very cool stuff. So, things on the client side that we need to change. We need to check what's going on in our case 6. We need to check what's going on in our case 2 and our case 3. Okay, so let's keep this open on the left. Let's go to handling coming packets on the right. Let's look at 2. Okay, so response. Doing some stuff here. Let's intercept those extra 2. Oh, it was extra 3 actually. Var. Oh, this is actually uh, global dot player x equals buffer read buffer buffer u32 and this is going to go into a successful response before we head to the main menu and it's going to be the same with player y and here we can say var current room equals the last u32 in this buffer and then here i'm going to say to do let's send the player to the correct room so i haven't implemented this yet but at a later stage we can say we can put a switch here and say well if it's a, a zero or a one go to the room that corresponds to that we can actually just make a global here called player room i think that's better might as well initialize this where we need it over here equals zero cool Okay, back to handling coming packets. Let's head to three. Same kind of thing. Let's grab these. Let's put them down here. You might not even actually want to do this if you want them to go to the main menu first. Okay, so that's two and three. Let's now head over to case six. So currently case 6 just reads the ID, the type, and the name. And if we go down here, it now needs to read X and Y. So we can see there X and Y. Actually, to this, we also need to add the, the room. U32, room ID. Player, player Y, player room, X, Y, player room. So let's see, player was object player. We need to make sure those variables exist in object player. Here we go. Player X, zero, player Y equals zero, player room equals zero. All right, close that back here. It's all good. Must we get to implement this? Get to that last. So we need to now get that x, y, and room over here. So we're going to say var p x var p y. It's actually the same as up here at the top. P x p y room id. ID type name X Y room ID. ID type name X Y room ID. ID type name X Y room ID. Good, good, good. Okay, so this one is going to be remote player. Dot um, remote X remote player dot remote Y. Oh, actually not. Oops, what am I doing? This is going to be P X. Over here. And this is going to be PY. So this is where we're creating a remote player. Good, that's gone. That's very good. Okay, if player doesn't exist yet, 
fantastic otherwise this player is leaving and it's as simple as that now let's go back to the to do that we've got right down here now that we've established the data structure of our any files we can save them it's going to be any open this is going to be if you scroll up it's going to be p name which is set over here plus dot i and i any close make sure we get that done so we need to write the room id the position and that's it eh? room id x and y so look for any right there we go paste it in there room is going to be room id This is going to be px and py. Fantastic. So that about wraps up all the things. So let's run through that quickly one more time. The player on this side of the world, that's client side, when he logs in, let's see where that happens. Over here. He is sending his ID, his username, and his password to a three. Coming down to a three, what that does, it takes his username and password, it initializes some variables, finds out if he exists, and if he does, opens up his file, grabs his password that's stored in there, grabs his X and Y in his current room, does some checks. If they succeed, the response is one, and then it's gonna send the response the X and the Y and the current room. So we have to initialize these just in case response is zero. We're still sending something back. We're gonna have a buffer full of different kinds of things being sent through because we can't anticipate which ones to look through without making things a little bit more complex. So that goes back to the client with the three. Maybe here. And depending on what the response is, we save some variables over there. And these X and Ys are used in our game world create event over here to then create our player in the right spot and then obviously over here we are telling the server that we have successfully joined so it needs to notify everyone else so that's a six going going into handling coming packets on a six over there is our x y and our room id setting some things up for people telling our players about this change it's always coming back to a six and so on and so on and if we have to look at the register over here again sends username and password hash and then this script does a similar thing to the login right over here sending the initial x and y coordinates and initial room so let's save everything and let's see if anything breaks ooh looks like we've got an error ah this is supposed to be plus okay abort stop everything server scripts and coming packets open this up That's supposed to be plus. Oh wow, we put this everywhere. Whoops. There we go. Save things and let's try again. Let's register a new guy. Let's call him James. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Register. Oh, okay, something wrong here. Username, object controller, username not set before reading it. Okay. 26. It's also in the server. Username, password. Ah, this is supposed to be a string. There we go. Credentials, credentials. Credentials, perfect. Okay. Save again. Let's try this once more. Okay, server's up. Client is starting now. Register. James. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Register. Cool. He's in. 
play. It's going to be red, spawning at the first position. So let's put him over here, far away from where he should start. Let's push escape. Let's exit the game. Okay, so now he's coming in maybe a week later. Maybe he's got some more free time. He wants to play. He wants to be in the same room at the same position that he left off. So let's start this off again. Log in as James. Five. Oh, okay, so our login isn't working. One, two, three, four, five. Let's exit that. Let's actually go and see what James's any file looks like. So here we are within uh, what will be your username, app data, local. Uh, James, here he is. Let's see. Okay, so it says position X and Y. Those are the, de those are the defaults, so it did save nicely. Room zero, great, great. Credentials, password, username. Perfect, everything's good here. So it's within this code to log him in. Ah, found the problem. We borrowed that from the register. It actually has to be if file exists. Okay, save. Run this again. Log in. James. One, two, three, four, five. Log in, play. Let's make him orange. Okay, so he spawned again at the beginning, which means the escape press didn't work. So let's push escape. Let's leave. Let's go back to here. Back to James. 224-352, let's see if that's different from register, it is different, 224-332, okay, 352, okay, cool, let's go to our escape, let's trace this through, local player, pushes escape, it sends his x, y to a 6, okay, x, y, 0, Let's just double check that was a U32. Okay, good, good. This is so far so good. To a 6. Okay, XY room ID. Alright, XY. Oh, where's this player room ID? Player room. To add that. Let's see, is there a player X, a player Y, and a player ID? Playroom, there it is. Okay, that's fine. Tell other players about this change. Okay, PXPY room ID. PXPY room ID, good. So six. If the player is going to the game room. Okay, so it's going to go into here when he goes to the game room. But he's going to be sending something else when he leaves. So it is a zero. So let's see. Zero, not equal to zero. So it's coming down here. P name plus any position room, ID X Y. That's good. So it is doing that. Let's just say what if he is going to the game room. Tell the players, X Y player room. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. That seems okay. All right, so let's see if he logs in. Maybe that's the problem. Sending a XY and current room or buffer U32s. Scripts handling coming packets. So we need to find a three. There it is. Responses over there. Success. Global player X, player Y, player room. So U32, U32, U32. Hmm. That's why that let's go to not the boot room sorry let's go to the game world let's see here x y it is working here hmm it's very strange very strange indeed let's just try this one more time so according to this any file he should be spawning at 224 and 352 james Twenty four three thirty two. Hmm. So he spawned back there in the start. Let's put him way out. So X should be way over five hundred. Let's push escape. Exit. Okay. Let's start up our client again. James. Are you orange. Aha. There we go. He did spawn out this way. That's good. That's very good news. So it is in fact working fine. Let's put him in the air, escape, play, 
There we go. That works. If he goes to the main menu, he's right where he is. If he leaves the game and joins again, he should also be right where he left off. Making green. There we go. King of the hill. Good stuff. So just one more thing before we wrap this up. Let's put another player in there. Just make sure we haven't broken anything else. All right, so let's get JP in over here. Let's make him red. Okay, so he's down here. Everything else is still moving. Let's see, can he throw shit? He can still throw stuff. That's perfect. So now let's get him to leave the game completely. Well, actually, let's put him over here on the other side. Let's put him on the right. Okay, let's get him to leave the game completely. Let's fire it up on my right-hand side. Okay, let's see if he can join where he left off without breaking the game. Okay, log in. JP, one, two, three, four, five. Play, make him blue. Boom, he's on the right, exactly where he left off. How perfect is that? So guys, that's what it takes to save player position. Hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. I do look forward to your comments. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. You can also check out Element Earth. It's available on the Amazon App Store and Google Play Store. Project Files are straight in the description. If you have any suggestions for future videos, especially on this series, please let me know through PM or comment on this video itself. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.